Welcome to Core Cutting Today for August 27th, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now and give you my opinion on them. If you want to learn more about these stories in the show notes down below, I'll put a link to each story so you can read about them for yourself in the order I talk about them. Let us know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here, hey, hit that subscribe button. It's a huge help. If you've been here a while, hit that like button. It lets YouTube know you enjoy what we're doing. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. Well, let's dive into it because there's a lot to talk about in the last 24 hours. AT&T's head of TV's retiring. Huge deals in Disney Plus, so let's dive into it. Right now, you can get 33% off of Disney Plus if you prepay for three years. You have to be a D23 member, and D23 is Disney's fan club. It's free to join. Um, once you go create an account there, they say within 36 to 40 hours, an offer will appear in your account to offer you 33% off of Disney Plus again if you prepay for three years this is a great offer you're guaranteed for three years no price hikes downsize you do have to pay 140 dollars and change plus tax depending on where you live so great deal here uh for disney plus fans a lot of people have been wondering does this mean the um 6.99 price and the 69 dollar for a year price is no longer good it is good this is not for the bundle this is for the standard package you have um, basically this week to get it. So with that 36 to 40 hour time frame, once you join to get the offer, don't wait. Sign up now to get the offer. Link in the show notes to sign up for Disney Plus at 33% off. All right, let's dive into it because wow, what a news day yesterday was and this morning. AT&T CEO of AT&T TV, DirecTV, AT&T TV Now, which used to be DirecTV Now, Uverse also, and more, is retiring. Kind of weird that they're right in the middle of rolling out the uh, new AT&T TV. It's in 10 test markets. It'll be nationwide by the end of the year. But basically by the start, around the beginning of October, he's going to be gone. No replacement has been announced. They said that will be coming soon, which doesn't mean they don't have anybody. Often in these companies don't like to kick somebody out the door or have somebody retired and immediately say, here's the new guy. So often they'll say, hey, this executive is retiring. Um, John D Don Bowen? I don't know, I apologize. No one pronounces my last name correct, so I'd really apologize for butchering that. I'm gonna say, hey, thank you for all these um, years of service, and now we're gonna find somebody else. He's been running the TV department for about two years now, and before that he was in their technology section. So he's been with at t over 10 years. So it's not like he's some new guy they brought in and now is leaving. This is a pretty significant exit within at and uh, leadership team. Is he retiring? Is he being forced out? Has been the topic of conversations. Uh, honestly, if at t wants to fire somebody, they've had no problem in the past just firing somebody. So I think if at t really wanted him gone, was unhappy, he would be gone, not by retirement. Just, just to be blunt about that. But uh, October 1st is his uh, official retirement day. And it would be interesting to see who replaces him. It would be interesting to see if that changes the future of AT&T's TV, DirecTV, AT&T TV Now, HBO Max, and more. So it's just a very weird time, right in the middle of a massive transition within AT&T to have the man leading that, the man who is driving AT&T's uh, TV launch, the man who's driving the shutdown of Uverse and the transition for DirecTV Now and more, is now leaving. We'll see what happens. Let me know what you think of that. Are you excited? Now, these things often bring a lot of hope within the core cutting community that, hey, the next person will, will get core cutting, right? The next person will. Not necessarily gonna happen. Uh, just keep that in mind. Typically, they bring somebody in, up from within the company, someone who's already established in this transitional mindset of what they're already doing. Um, but if they don't do that, if they do truly go outside the company to hire somebody with a different vision maybe, that may be good news for core cutting, but I doubt that's gonna happen. So link in the show notes if you wanna learn more. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think. Speaking of AT&T, uh, we often get questions about, hey, I saw this great direct TV deal. Should I go back to cable? So we sat down and said, okay, what are the fees? Turns out there's 11 different fees. There are fees to activate your account. There are fees if they, you know, often what I've been hearing about people is like, hey, I got this great deal in a bundle where I got two 
two receivers or three receiver bundle and this and that. I don't really need that one receiver, so I'll put it in the closet and not use it. The, and they, they say, oh, I won't have to pay the fee if I don't activate it. Well, that's true, but it turns out they actually have a fee for non-activation. So if you take a receiver as part of one of these bundle deals and you don't activate it, then you're gonna find yourself in a position of paying over a hundred bucks for that receiver, even though you didn't use it. Um, and there's many other fees. There's a fee if you don't use their automated payment system and you talk to a human to make a payment, there's a convenience fee on that. So there's 11 different hidden fees. Of course, some of you know about regional sports fees and more on DirecTV. Now, a lot of people ask, Luke, what makes these hidden? Why do you call these hidden fees? Well, the reason I call these hidden fees is because they're not included in the promotional pricing. A lot of these fees are known. These are fees that AT&T knows exactly what you're gonna be paying. And maybe in the poster, okay, maybe in the billboard, you can understand it. But when I go online and I look at the pricing, it doesn't include that, even though AT&T knows what those fees are. Just tiny tax, you know, fees and taxes not included. You have to dig down to find out what these fees are. There you go. For example, the convenience fee for, for the phone, even though they say there's a convenience fee, I struggled to find out what that fee was. It's sometimes even very hard to figure out what these fees are going to be. So keep that in mind. But let me know, did you have DirecTV or cable? What was the last bill you had? How much of it was fees and taxes? It's not uncommon to find these th um, companies charging over 50 bucks in fees and taxes um, to be able to access uh, their service that you're already paying for. There's the, H, uh, there's the DVR rental fees and the HD technology fees and the DVR service fees and more and all these different cable companies out there. So check out that post down below. All right, speaking of streaming and getting away from some fees, earlier this year, Spectrum announced a new streaming service called Spectrum Essentials. $14.99 gets you 60 channels, including ones like AMC and the Hallmark Channel but pretty much no news, no sports, and no local channels. Very much like Philo for $14.99. Now it rolled out in a few markets at first and more and more. Now it seems to be rolled out to all Spectrum markets, including ones that were like old Time Warner cable markets. We have confirmed several Time Warner cable markets are now available to get Spectrum Essentials. Now they're making it relatively difficult to find this bundle. There's no real website. It's pretty much available by flyer and by phone. So keep that in mind that if you want this deal, you have to call for it, you have to hope to get a flyer and more. This is on top of the Spectrum Choice and the Spectrum Stream TV packages. So Spectrum now has three different packages from $14.99 to $24.99 plus taxes. I don't believe the Spectrum um, uh, Essentials has any like streaming fees, the Spectrum Choice and the Spectrum uh, Stream TV do have like uh, broadcast TV fees. So keep that in mind. Uh, but anybody here have Spectrum Essentials? I have Spectrum Internet. I did. I have not signed up for it yet. I'd love to know your review of this. I think Spectrum is actually for all their downside on the cable side. They're being relatively creative on the streaming package side. They just don't seem to really want to commit to it. It's like, okay, we're going to do these fun things. We're going to offer a package where you get your locals and you can pick 10 channels from a bunch. Or, hey, for people who aren't sports or news fans, we can give you 60 channels for $14.99. Uh, these are good bundles at good pricing, but they're not really marketing them, which I find a little strange. So let me know if you've used these. I think Spectrum could be doing a lot better if they would get more aggressive about talking about these packages. I bet though they're worried it would cannibalize their much more profitable cable packages. So let me know what you think. I love a review. All right, uh, so Apple TV OS is getting an update. This is probably the last major update before Apple TV OS 13. This is 12.4.1. It's mostly a bug fix update. Fix some bugs on the back end. Nothing major here. The most interesting thing is this is laying the groundwork for a fall release of TV OS 13 which will include a lot of additional new features, including a new home screen. New, all, all kinds of new features will be coming with tvOS 13 to your Apple TV. It's now available for download on your Apple TV, so you can go download this and install it. Anybody do it, anything cool, hidden? Problem with uh, a lot of updates, even Apple does this, is they will update it and they'll list, like here's the things we fix, you know, bugs, performance improvements, etc. And then there'll be, they'll slip something in. Roku is very notorious about this, that they will make a change in an update but not tell anybody. 
So if you found anything cool in the Apple TV OS 12.4.1 update, please leave us a comment, let us know. I love to hear about it. But when the um, TV OS 13 comes out, we will have a full review of it on the TV so you can see it and love to know what you think. All right. Uh, next up, Pluto TV is adding six new channels. These include MTV The Challenge, MTV Went Wild, MTV Cribs, if you uh, want to watch 24 Hour Cribs, MTV Ridiculousness, and Dogs 24 um, 7 uh, out there. Oh, one more MTV Are You the One? So, again, this is Viacom taking full advantage of their huge back catalog of content out there with MTV and more to say, hey, we can offer all this content. It doesn't really cost them anything because they own the rights to it. And if you watch it, they make ad revenue. But if you have a dog in the house that wants to watch some TV, now Pluto TV offers a 24 7 dog channel aimed for dogs. So let me know what you think of these channels. Let me know if there's any new ones here that you find interesting. In the show notes, I have a full breakdown of all the channels with uh, what's included in them. And last story up of the day, there's a new Breaking Bad movie coming from Netflix. The trailer is up. It comes out October 11th. This is a sequel. This is a movie that follows um, Jesse. Uh, what happens to him after we see him drive away from that compound after he escaped. So what happens to him? Where does this story go? Check out the show uh, notes down below for the trailer. You can watch the full trailers now on YouTube. And we have a link to it in our post where you can watch it right there on our website. But I'd love to know, any Breaking Bad fans, I watched the entire series, enjoyed the ending. I enjoyed everything about it. Uh, really no complaints. I thought I actually thought they did a decent job with ending it, though maybe they dragged it out a little bit longer than I would have liked. Dexter was kind of that way. I thought Dexter should have ended one season earlier. Just felt, I even think the creator of Dexter said this. They wanted to end it a season earlier, and then Showtime talked them into one more season, so they had to kind of rewrite and extend things sometimes. So let me know what you think. Are you excited for a new Breaking Bad movie? Is there any particular Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon, etc. original programming coming out this fall that you're most excited about? Maybe something on Disney Plus? Leave us a comment, let us know. But I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Make sure to go over to corecardsnews.com because this is just a fraction of the content we produce there. This is some of the highlights. There's a lot more content over at corecardsnews.com which doesn't make it to our YouTube channel. So check that out. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. We'll be back tomorrow with more core cutting news, tips, tricks, reviews, and how-tos. So ring that notification bell. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.